Okay, um, we are back with some more Please Be Happy. It has been just about, like, a century since the last time I did any of this, uh, just because I realized that it was really hard on my voice to have two visual novels going at the exact same time. I say as I'm doing this and Digimon Survive at the same time. So that's fun. Um, but anyways, with that being said, for everyone who doesn't remember, we are some type of fox person, some, like, a fox that somehow learned how to turn into a girl. We got on a plane, and I think we're looking for a person who visited us when we were, like, just a fox. And now we're, like, just going around this town meeting people. That, that's, that's really about it. I only did, like, three episodes before I, uh, had to go on break. But yeah, we're gonna finish the demo of, uh, this. And then we're going to get back into doing some more Fate Stay Night with the uh, Unlimited Blade Works route. So with that being said, let's just jump into it. The soft sound of cloth rustling wakes me from a dreamless sleep. How did someone sneak up on me twice now? I don't know how long it's been. The sky outside has darkened significantly, and, the, and now the stars twinkle outside the window. Oh? There's no time to react to the sound as the sounds come closer. I hear no footsteps. But suddenly a woman steps into view. Her clothes are pure white, making her stand out like a ghost in the dark library. Her cape rustles again as she reaches towards one of the shelves. One of the shelves I'm hiding behind, to be precise. Gingerly, she moves two books to the side, and then slides another book into the space she created. She, hand handles, them like she handles them like precious treasure that might break if she's too rough. I stay perfectly still, afraid to even breathe in case she notices me. My heart beats wild. I love her outfit, dude. Also, again, I know it's been so long since I've said this, but I, if you're watching these episodes all back to back, I've said this a lot, but dude, I love how this game looks. Like, it the, it looks like it's just paint. It looks like it's been a paint, like, this is a painting. And I love that aesthetic, and I feel like it fits, like, the vibe of the story so well so far. My heart beats wildly as she slowly and deliberately looks over the shelf examining their titles before taking a book from the second lowest row. Through the gap she created in the shelves, our eyes meet in the darkness. Well, that's not really what this image uh, illustrates, but sure. Oh no. I tense up as she steps around the shelves, shelving between us to get a better look at me, preparing myself to leap away if the need arises. The carefully, the carefully memorized layout of the library flashes through my mind as I frantically plot the best way to flee. Even as I prepare my escape, I can see her taking in everything about me, the stolen blanket, the makeshift pillow, my generally disheveled appearance. She opens her mouth, and I brace myself for the verbal attack that's sure to come. Hello there. Um, I think I'm going to go like this. And turn up the volume, so then we can hear the voice acting better. I think in the last couple episodes I just, like, narrated over the voices. But, I think at this time... Well, no, because then maybe the music would be too loud while I'm actually over the parts that I'm narrating, if I have this loud enough for it to be, like, heard. I don't know, we'll try it for this episode, and then I won't in the next episode. Um, and then when I edit them, I'll see how it works. I don't know. Just experimentation. So, yeah. Wait, actually, I just had a thought. Even though I do love the mute, where sound? Uh, I I'm having such a hard. I can't. I genuinely can't tell like where my Kurt like it it like anything is on this. So I'm actually going to go like this. Go like this, and then go like this. So then we can hear everything that's being said. There we go. Let's try, let's try that. I don't have anywhere else to um, I'm also going to make sure that the... Okay, it, it, I was just making sure that OBS was actually like doing a good job at recording the audio. Sorry that this is such an experimental episode. It's been a while since I've done this, this like visual novel. Oh, I love her voice though. <gasps> Get you a girl. Oh wait, I, I didn't read that. Uh, where's the where's the log? Log. 
She leans down and offers me a hand. I look at it warily. Okay, now now I can... Using a controller for this is not very good. I'm just going to say that. They probably didn't expect people to try it too often, but it just doesn't work that well. I don't take it, but I slowly stand, letting the blanket fall to my feet and trying to subtly get into position to run. Well, I have an extra room on the second floor that you're welcome to buy, if you'd prefer that. Otherwise, you're more than welcome to remain here, on the ground. I apologize for waking you. With a smile, the oddly calm woman steps away and busies herself organizing another row of books. So does she, like, own the libraries? Dude, the characters in this game look so great. I love this. Um, yeah, I'm guessing she, like, owns the library, I guess, as she said I have a room on the second floor. Otherwise, that'd be a weird thing to say. Unless she's just so rich that she just rents multiple rooms when she's here. The, with a smile, the oddly calm woman steps away and busies herself organizing another row of books. She probably expects me to let my guard down and take her off her. I'm just a stranger, someone who broke into her library. There's no reason for her to treat me kindly. My years of experience, and there are plenty of those, tell me it's a trap. Thanks, but no thanks. I'll just be going actually. Sorry to bother you like this. I hurry past her, shoulders tense as I expect her to grab me, or try to stop me. She doesn't, though. The one time I glance back, she's watching me with a strange expression that I don't recognize. When I get outside and away from the library, I breathe a sigh of relief. Whew, that was close. I'm not falling for that one again. The last time I let someone feel sorry for me, and accepted a place to stay, I woke up to them trying to empty my wallet. I may be a thief. But at least I do it honestly. I wouldn't try to trick someone like that. That wasn't the first time someone tried to fool me and take advantage of me either. <sighs> Still, it's a shame to lose such a nice hiding place. <laughs> Maybe I'll give it a couple of days for that woman to forget about me. And um, then try I don't know how forgettable you are. You do have fox ears sticking out of the side of your head. You're you're pretty recognizable. <laughs> There being an empty room on the second floor, then maybe I could sneak into there. Tonight, though, I'm on my own. Shivering, I wrap my coat and tail around myself as tightly around myself as I think about what to do next. The rain has stopped, although it's still cold and cloudy. My stomach grumbles since I haven't eaten anything other than snacks all day. Blech. I may as well get it over with and go check on the status of my den. It's not as bad as I expected, which is a pleasant surprise. What's a little mine? It'll be just fine. I swapped my fox form to prod around. The entrance has caved in a little, but after I scoop that out, I find that the rest of the tunnels and main room are relatively intact. Cold as hell, but intact. Seems the trees protected the den from a lot of the rain. It takes me a while to find the spot where I buried my stash, since the stick I used to mark the spot got washed away. Eventually I locate it, though, and start digging. The cold mud makes my paws dirty and sore, and little flecks cover my fur. After I finally reach the soggy plastic bags, I shake myself clean before opening them as a human. Some water has seeped through, and I open the soiled items before tossing them away. I'm not too picky, but I have plenty of the- but I have plenty of other snacks to choose from. Eat up, birdies! A few of them swoop down to inspect the offerings. I scarf down a quick meal of cookies and unwarmed soup along with some cold water from the stream. At least the water is satisfying. Even though I just woke up from a nap not too long ago, I shift back into my fox form to crawl in into my den and curl up. I'm sure it'll be a while before I fall asleep, but I don't feel like going back into town. I've had enough excitement for one day. This isn't all that bad. Regular foxes without magic powers have it way worse than I do. Although, back when a fox was all I was, I wouldn't have really cared. To this day, I'm not sure what it is that makes me different. I used to be just like them. No desire to go beyond the forest or anything. And then one day, I became whatever I am now. All I had was my necklace, a small scroll that I can't read, and the memory of a person who had given it to me. They were so kind to me, that stranger in the forest. They wished me well, even though I was just an ordinary fox. Somehow, that didn't really seem to matter to them. I never even knew their name, just their face and their voice. But I know that I'll recognize them when I see them again. It's just a matter of finding them. So since then, I've been looking... I've been looking. Looking and surviving. 
Looking for them is what keeps me going. It's enough to live for if I wasn't. I don't know what else I'd be doing. I guess I'd just be surviving. But if that was the only thing, I think I'd rather have just stay a fox. Standing outside my den in human form, I take stock of how things stand. The sun's thankfully out this morning, but everything remains damp from the ground to the muggy air itself. The chill and the breeze is the worst, making me shiver every time it hits me. The bell house was pleasant when I visited a couple days ago, so I decide to head down towards the main street and get a coffee there while working out my next moves. Coming to the door of the cafe, I pause and wipe my feet on the mat outside. The human fascination with shrouding themselves in concrete makes a little more sense as I work the mud off my feet. With that, I finally head inside, only to stop in my tracks as the door shuts behind me. Oh, is it? I was honestly expecting it to be like her and then the, the girl that she just walked away from. Because I want that awkward conversation to have happen like, Hey, listen, you said you don't have a place to stay. And then you just walked away from a place to stay. What's up with that? But dude, this girl's so cute. I love her. Standing behind the counter is the same girl who I saw reading in the library yesterday. Taking it with, talking with the customer as she takes their order. That gentle aura about her is unmistakable. The person in front of me finishes their order, and I step up to the counter. Good morning. Welcome to the bell house. What can I make for you? <gasps> I loved her voice. It's so cute. Oh my gosh, I can't get over it. Oh, hi. Uh, oh my gosh, I did not realize how short Miho was compared to like just other people. Like I expect like I don't know. I was just expecting her like to be slightly taller, I guess. Granted, this girl could also just be like a little taller than average. I don't know. Anyways, a vanilla latte? No, that's boring. I'm glad you asked. I was just thinking that you look like the sort of person who would enjoy one of our fair kiss <gasps> That drink sounds amazing. I'm not a coffee guy in the slightest, but that sounds amazing. It's one of our signature drinks with a vanilla gelato base and a mint. Never mind. I hate mint. Ugh. I was planning to get something warm, but that does sound pretty good. It did. Until you got to the mint part. Just mint, ugh. Outside of toothpaste, please keep it out of my mouth. Okay. Give me one of those then. Perfect. And could I get your name, please? It's Miho. She scribbles something onto a cup and finishes finishes it with a big flourish. I'll have that right out for you. Thanks. Also, that was weird. Did her, did her mic just, like, crackle there? That was sounded weird. I pay and then go take the same seat as before next to one of the windows. It's pretty empty in her again, so I can sit wherever I want. Before the barista, start, barista starts making my drink, I spot her writing something else down in a little notebook. She glances my way once or twice while she does. Is she, like, drawing her or something? She glances my way once or twice while she does, but I pretend not to notice. I wonder what it is. The barista yesterday didn't write anything down. Anyway, I've got more important things on my mind. I'm all over the plan, which is... I mull over the plan which formed as I walked here, becoming increasingly happy with it. Tonight I've already decided I want to sneak back into the library. Between that picture frame and some of the other trinkets I saw, I should be able to pilfer enough enough to spend my next few days in Wellington. Finding somewhere to sell it should be the easy part. I've got a dozen excuses that I can recite about where the items came from. Dead grandma, spring cleaning, new renovations. Sometimes I try extra hard and pretend that the things I'm selling are really special to me and earn a bit more cash that way. Sometimes I just take whatever they give me. After a few years of watching other humans do it, and trying it out myself, I've gone good at pawning the items off. I find myself idly watching the barista, making my drink. While I do, I practice a disarming smile. All of her movements are quick and practice, but she has that faraway look in her eyes that I noticed yesterday. She looks up, she looks up and her eyes meet. I don't look away, and she turns pink before ducking you go way behind the machine out of sight. Oh, weird girl. I turn my head around to look around the cafe, and a butterfly outside catches my attention, so I watch that instead. It's just one of those things of like, she probably just doesn't get, understand like, all of the human like, things that well, so she's just sitting there staring at her. Not noticing like, not knowing how weird that would be. So she, when like, the other girl looks up, it's like, oh, this girl's just staring at me, okay. 
It flutters back and forth, landing on a flower and resting its wings. Oh, my coffee is ready. I quickly get up and skip over to the counter. Cup in hand, she starts to head over to give it to me. But then several things happen at once. One of the little tassels on the pocket of her apron catches on one of the drawers behind the counter, and she jerks to a stop, eyes wide with surprise. And my drink tumbles out of her hand, landing on the counter with a wet gloop sound as the ice cream splats against it, sending mint green river. Oh, cleaning up ice cream sucks. Like, it has to be, like, completely melted for it to not. <laughs> green rivers of coffee everywhere. A few seconds pass where we just look at each other, neither of us quite sure what to do. And then she takes a deep breath. Her words spell out faster than the beverage, making it even making it hard to even understand what she's saying. Her face is bright red as she spins back around and grabs another empty cup, and stops, hands hovering awkwardly. <laughs> she scurries back to the mess, wiping at it with some napkins. She mops as a, she mops up as much of it as she can with one hand, and then leaves the soggy paper on the counter while she starts to remake my drink. I don't even know if she's talking to me or to herself. I freeze for a second, looking for an appropriate response to an apology. I'm not used to people apologizing to me. Oh, it's fine. I'm not in a hurry. Instead, I just sit back down at one of the tables and watch. She makes the drink twice as fast and then carries it very slowly to the counter, setting it down in a clean spot. This time she takes a deep breath before speaking, like she's afraid she's going to mess that up too. Alright, here's your drink. Again, I'm very sorry. Well, this is your first time here, isn't it? <laughs> I hope it doesn't leave a bad impression. Second, actually. Yesterday was the first time. How'd you know? I make an effort to remember as many of our customers as I can, as well as their favorite orders. I believe you can learn a lot about a person from how they drink their coffee. I wouldn't know. I've had coffee like two times. Terrible experiences both times. Well, that's too bad for her, because she won't remember me at all next time. I take a big sip of the drink she made for me. Why is she so confident about people not, like, remembering her? Is, like, another thing of, like, the pearl necklace is that it makes people forget? I take a big sip of the drink she made for me. It's creamy and rich and sweet all at the same time. I'm very glad that you like it. It's one of my favorite beverages that we serve. In fact, the recipe was my idea. Whoa! They should put you in charge of all the recipes! She smiles again. Seems like she's gone over the crisis of the spilled drink already. Thank you. I'll make you another one of my favorites next time, if you'd like. Totally! At least I'll know what to order next time, even though I'll have, forgot have been forgotten. Oh, is that is that totally what it is? That's so sad. That is like really depressing. If like, because that's what I like. It feels like it's leading into like she's too confident in like, oh, I'll just go like a like a day or two, and then I'll just immediately be forgotten. I don't I don't like the implications of that. I'm already thinking of this place as my go-to coffee shop, especially since it's a well. Granted, if she was being forgotten, then she would be able to stay areas a lot longer and keep stealing. I don't know. Especially since it's in a convenient area. With tasty drinks and a cute barista, I don't have a reason to go anywhere else. A shocking sound from the employee area gets both of our attention. Hey Aspen, can you start another batch of croissants? Oh, sure. I'll be right there. She calls back over her shoulder and then looks back at me briefly. Have a nice day, Miho. You too. With a wave, she gathers the trash from the cleanup and throws that away before disappearing into the back. Her name is Aspen. That's a pretty name. I'll have to try to remember. I'll have to try and remember that. Getting up from my seat, I decide to head back outside for some fresh air, sipping my fairy kiss. My fairy kiss chiller. I'm having such a hard time reading this. I don't know why. Sipping my fairy kiss chiller as I go, I head out the door and onto the increasingly busy main street. I already know my plans for tonight, but I've still got some time to kill before then. What should I do? Wait, on the map you can select locations to visit and spend time in. Just take note though, most locations will pass time, 
How you experience the story will be up to you. Events that pass time will be marked with a clock. Some events will only show up at certain times and on certain routes. Oh, how many routes are there? Um, for today, you can see all the events, but in the future, you'll have to pick and choose how you spend time here. Click anywhere to continue. <gasps> Ooh, dates and romance. Ooh. Okay, so I'm on Cuba Street. Um, should I just go to the stars? What do the stars mean again? I don't remember. Um, side story. Okay, so these are just like little side stories. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. But, how long is this demo though? Because this is just a demo. It's not the full game yet. I don't even know if the full game is released yet. Mm. Hang on, let me check. Because... After I check this, I am going to, uh, also, I don't know why it, like, just showed my entire desktop there for a second. Um, after I check this, I'm going to end the episode. I just want to know when it releases, because I'm pretty sure it's, like, sometime in the winter, isn't it? Yeah, it's planned coming 2022, so just sometime in 2022. <gasps> and there was a Please Be Happy live stream on here? What the freak? I don't know if that was like by like the creators and stuff, but if that was, that'd be cool. Oh, but I can watch it anytime. That's actually really cool. Um, So yeah, I still just have the demo, so I don't know how long that's going to go for. Um, But anyways, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.